Hello again, everybody. Red of Half Century Collecting Sports Cards uh, with a long overdue video. I had recently sent about 20 cards into SGC. Second time I've uh, done that and thought I'd just do a little show and tell on what I got back. Still not sure if I'm a proponent or opponent of graded cards, but uh, of the graded cards, I do like SGC uh, better, even though they're now owned by the same company as PSA. But we'll start with this is a 64 cons, uh, Frank Robinson. I've shown this card before in my top 400 videos, but uh, I sent that in. Nice looking card that gets a 1.5. We've got a Topps double header from 1955. Hank Aaron's second year. That one gets a three. Pretty nice looking card. And then a Cashin from uh, 1928. A Burley Grimes. This is one I just kind of wanted to make sure was authentic. Recent uh, eBay pickup and gets a two. And then, I'm not sure I, if I like how these fit in the holders, but end up just kind of gargantuan. Now, this is a 57 spick and span of Hank Aaron. Harder to find, a local cleaning company that put these cards out. I think pretty cool looking card. Gets a four, they're blank backed. And then a Hires Root Beer card, second year of Bill Mazeroski, 1958. Those Hires Root Beer uh, designs that Bowman was gonna use. Um, their next year, 56, but uh, never came about, but gets a 6.5 there for that Maz card with the tabs, a little tougher to find. And then we've got uh, the regular size cards. And when a card comes down slabbed, you always wonder what the problem is, but this is the reason I sent this one in. I always wondered about this, thought maybe it was just trimmed, um, but it actually gets a counterfeit. So that is good to know. Um, part of my Hall of Fame collection, and this is the card I targeted, the 34 Gaudi Gehrig. And I did later, pick this up just because I was always concerned about that other card but I was wondering if maybe I could sell it um, but now it is just gonna go I don't know what I'll do with it put in the trash or just put big marking counterfeit on it or whatever I do but it will not be in circulation any longer and then from 1887 the Alan Ginter set Hall of Famer John Montgomery Ward I don't really give you why it's authentic um Guessing it's just all that paper loss. The back of this card actually looks really nice, but uh, the front has lost a lot. Usually you see them the other way around because of being glued into albums and stuff. But this is a 87 or 88 old judge, Billy Hamilton, that also got authentic, and I think it's probably been trimmed because it's always measured up a little bit shorter. And then we've got from the uh, Goodwin Champions set, one of the most beautiful sets, colorful set. Gets a 1.5 of one of the best pitchers of all time, Tim Keefe. It's got that chip there. That Without that, I think this gets a really pretty good grade. But 1.5 for a card from 1888, I will take. Um, a T206, Rube Markward. Gets a 1.5. It's got a tape mark on the back, which is much the reason for that. And then this is a cool set, this uh, T207, Max Carey, the Pirates, gets a two, which looks about right. Uh, and then one of my favorite cards, the American Carmel set of the best second baseman of all time, Rogers Hornsby, gets a 3.5. So I like that card a lot. And we've got... Um, American Caramel from 1922. Ross Young's flying up in the air to make that catch. Gets a three. One of my favorite looking cards. Um, and we got a Miller Huggins from the Willard Chocolate card of 23. With a crease across, getting a one. And I sent a Gaudi card in. Got a lot more non-graded Gaudis yet. This is a three of Herb Pennock. 
these are just kind of randomly chosen. I'm not sure why I sent in what I did on a lot of these, but and tried an, another 71 that I just thought was really nice. And this is a card that's almost impossible to find centered. Um, that gets an eight. I should check pop reports. I'm guessing that's pretty tough to find in an eight. I got a rookie Rick Yaz that we sent in. I think it's a 4.5. It's a little more kind of faded card. It's one that I had up on the wall for a long time. I bet it lost a lot of color with that because the back looks a lot better. And then this is a card I sent in just thinking it looked really nice. And I thought, man, if I get a 9 or even higher, I thought, well, I'll just sell it and uh, get an 8 instead for the card of mine. But I guess I got an 8, so I'll just keep what I got card for my Hall of Fame set on a classic card. And then another one that I, I kind of had the same idea with that I thought this Seaver, I thought was just really nice. And I don't know if it's a little of that diamond cut. And it's just a slight diamond cut that gets it down to a six. But um, I guess I won't be trading down for this one either because I didn't get quite as high a grade as I was hoping for there, but still fine. Nice card. This is a card I actually had to pay more for the grading because I was thinking it would get a 7 or maybe even 8. So I priced it a little higher and instead of costing $15, it costs whatever that next tier is, 80 or 85 or something like that. So it's going to cost me a little more for cards that are worth 1500 or more. Now they got graded a 6. That's probably right about what it might be worth. So maybe I could have got by with only paying 15 for that, but they didn't. They didn't downcharge. So that's all I got. Quick little video today. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll put together another episode for my top 400. It may be a few weeks, but I will get that going at some point. Have a good day.